Dare Adventures of Biggles. From the headquarters of the famous Australian 77 Squadron, Algy takes off in a helicopter piloted by Flight Lieutenant Bill Jamison. They cross the 38th parallel, the front line, and then hover over the position from which Ginge is reported to have been broadcasting. There is a road running from north to south, but no sign of a mobile broadcasting unit. This road they follow to the north. Then they see the lights of the truck. It turns off the road and stops. Algy identifies the broadcasting unit, but they cannot put down because it is pulled in beside a North Korean staging camp. I know it well. We've raided it a few times. And for Pete's sake, don't hover down here. A couple of decent rifle shots could bring us down from this height. Don't you believe it? It isn't so easy to knock down a helicopter. It's like shooting an emu. They duck about so much, you can't tell them which direction they're going to bob up next. All the same, lift the kite. There are so many lights in that camp, there must be dozens of troops there, and they'll see us. All right, so, so don't get excited. We'll duck up and see how the stars are going. Hey, did you leave your stomach down below? Oh, almost. It's like going up in a lift. I was right. This isn't the plane, it's a jack-in-the-box. Yeah, but a mighty handy old jack-in-the-box. Let me see, we should be high enough now. We'll move forward a bit. I'll become inquisitive if we hover here for too long. Uh, yep, we're safe enough now. Now, what about this mate of yours? I don't know what to do about Ginge. He's down there in the truck, I'm sure of it. But we obviously can't land smack beside the camp. Landing doesn't worry me. I can put down wherever you like. But you can't pull this ginge bloke out from a camp full of gooks. Of course, I was forgetting. You can put down anywhere in this thing, can't you? Look, I'm not going to put you down to take on the entire North Korean army by yourself. You might tackle the blokes in the broadcasting truck, but not that camp. Don't you worry about that. Will you put me down somewhere? Oh, have some sense, Algy. You'll be by yourself. Once I'm on the ground, I'll find some way to rescue Ginge. All I want you to do is put me there. Righto. All right, then there's a spur beyond that camp and beyond it a little deserted pocket. The Yank landed a helicopter there once to pick up one of our blokes that had been shot down. I reckon if it's been done once, it can be done again, eh? Well, preposterous, Gimlet L. Bean. The Lord and Master expects that every blighter this night shall do his belly duty, or some such nonsense. And you say Algy isn't here. Mm, that's right, Bertie. He seemed to think it was his duty to try and rescue Jane. Oh, that's a lot of belly rot. He had no right to... I say, do you think he had any chance? Well, he seemed to think so. Oh, then why did the blighter leave it till now? Why didn't he go off earlier? I mean to say... It, it, it was up to him to go tootling off into the ozone the moment his jolly old brain started to tick over. Old Ginge has been a prisoner for weeks. We can't leave him in this mess indefinitely. <laughs> Look, Algy's doing what he can, so don't get hot under the collar about it. Now tell me, what's happening with Biggles? Well, it's somewhat of a belly mix-up now. All would have trundled along perfectly if this Russian kite hadn't come snooping close to us. We think it might have been the old Starly sausage, and that sort of alters things somewhat. Eddie Clonch, Stalheim? Mm. Biggles thought he might get wind of, that, uh, wind of that stunt. Yes, well, maybe the blighter has. Maybe he spotted us right up there in the heart of the valley nonsense. That's why Biggles decided not to delay, but to whack in regardless with the raid on the jolly old International Brigade. He's right. If von Stalheim's here, they'll prepare for us. Where's Biggles now, Bertie? Well, he went burbling off by himself towards Kratzen. He was going to try and contact Pat and Wan Ling, then plan the jolly old stunt in detail so that he'd be ready to hop into action the minute we arrived. Then we mustn't waste any time getting up there. They might be stranded. Oh, we positively can't allow that to happen, by Joe. 
but at the same time, how ca can we trundle up there yet? I mean to say, we can't buzz off that old algae. Well, why not? We may not be back for a couple of days. Yes, but, well, he'd be most awfully annoyed if he's left out of this nonsense. Well, why should he be? He'll have plenty of fun in his own stunt. Yes, I know that. Now, look here, Bertie. Biggles is in a highly dangerous situation, and he's expecting us to help him out of it. Well, I still don't like going without algae. Look, you pig-headed young idiot. This is a military operation, not a friendly society. Is there any one good reason why we can't do the stunt without algae? Well, um, yes, there is. I mean, you say, um, your blokes are a jolly good team, Gilbert. I won't deny that, but there isn't one of them can fly a plane. Hang it all, Albine, if algae isn't with us... That'll leave only me to stay with the kite while the rest of you hop in and have all the fun. Bertie, get down to that plane. My blokes will be with you in ten minutes. That is the compound, Inspector. Before us, you see the wire through which the men attempted to escape. I'm glad Ginge and young Ross weren't caught up in that. Did Ross have any idea when Ginge would be brought back from North Korea? He was taken away indefinitely to broadcast those propaganda messages. Ian seemed to think he'd be kept at it until he refused to do any more. Uh, knowing young Ginge, that's likely to be any time. Does it alter your plans, Inspector? I'd like to change them, Wang. I hope to rescue Ginge and blow up the broadcasting station in the one operation. But the incident with the Russian kite rather forces my hand. We'll have to clear up the Kratzen end of the business first. If we attack here, they might kill Ginge, Biggles. Mm, they might try. We'll have to hop in first, that's all. I, I'm sorry, Pat, but I'm afraid we'll have to destroy this establishment while we're on the spot. Now, I want to know exactly what's in the compound. Yes. At the far end is a group of officers... Next to it is the eating hut, then our recreation room, and the long building closest to us is the sleeping quarters. Of the men? Yes. That is where Ian Ross sleeps. Did you see inside it? No. But we had Ross describe it for us, and at one end is a small cubicle in which sleeps the sergeant who supervises the hut. He's an American named Malone, Biggles. According to Ian, he's a most unpleasant type who went over to the communists. Mm, well, we'll remember Sergeant Malone. Uh, tell me more about the hut, one. Yes. Apart from the cubicle, there is simply the one big sleeping area. At the moment, 12 men are living there. Good. Now, the building's outside the compound. The village is across there to the right. Well, what's that bungalow place just beyond the wire? That is, is where the Commandant lives. During the day, he works in an office inside the compound, but at night he spends his time in the bungalow. He's there now, by the look of those lights. Now, finally, Wang, where's the broadcasting station? It is housed in a stone building near the village, but for the time being, it is out of order. <laughs> Thanks to Ginge. <laughs> yes, that was good work. But before we go, it'll be permanently out of order. And so will the mobile unit, if I can help it. How are you going to work that, Biggles? I'm not even worrying about it yet. Operation Ginger will come after Operation Kratzen. My next port of call is going to be the bungalow. You feel like spying on the Commandant, Pat? So, the German pilot, he plead with me and say, Please, please do not do this to me. You are a wonderful pilot, and I know you will be kind. <laughs> so I shoot him to show him I'm also a wonderful shot. <laughs> oh, is that not a good story, Ginger, huh? <laughs> Look, Vladimir, you weren't the only one in the war. Although we didn't all shoot other pilots in cold blood. Oh, poof, he was only a German. No, oh, have it your own way. But please don't tell me any more stories. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. Ah, you always you want to go to sleep. First, I think maybe I like being your guard. You look the cheerful little worm. But now you're always unhappy. Now you don't laugh no more. And Vladimir like to laugh. <laughs> Vladimir is a funny man. <laughs> yes, we'll be funny somewhere else. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Oh, it is early. I don't feel like sleeping yet. 
Ginger. You don't think of escaping no more, huh? How can I, with you breathing down my neck all the time? But when I'm not here, you, you don't think to escape, eh? Look, Vladimir, all I want is some sleep. Oh, oh, that is all right then. Vladimir, go over to the camp. They're not like Ginger. At the camp, they're funny men. They like Vladimir's stories. They're welcome to them. I closed the door of the truck, and I bolted it on the outside. In the cabin, he's sleeping the engineer. So don't try the funny business when I'm gone, no? Heron, I told you that I want to go to sleep. Now run away. Oh, it is better in the staging camp. There they laugh at Vladimir. They think he's funny. Not like here. <laughs> there. Is that you, Ginger? Yes. Who is it? It's Algy. Are you alone in there? Algy? There's a bloke sleeping in the cabin, so for Pete's sake, don't make any noise. The door's bolted on the outside. Open it and I'll come out. Roger. Won't be a second. Ah, oh, you beauty, Algy. How did you make it? Tell you about it later. That big bloke isn't far away, so we'd better get clear. Open that door! Don't I tell you, Ginger? So, another English worm! When Vladimir sees Algy, he reaches at once for his gun. Will he prevent the rescue? With the engineer in the truck and the North Korean camp close by, how can the flyers escape? Listen again for thrills in the next chapter of... The Air Adventures of Biggles. The Air Adventures of Biggles. While Biggles has joined Pat and Wang Ling near the International Brigade camp at Crutzen, Algy is making a desperate attempt to rescue Ginger. He takes advantage of a moment when Vladimir leaves Ginger alone in the broadcasting truck. It only takes seconds to unbolt the door, then for the first time in weeks Ginger stands free. But not for long. There's a roar from the direction of the North Korean staging camp, and Vladimir races back to the truck. When he sees Algy, he reaches for his gun, but Algy is quicker. His 38 is already menacing the Russian. Keep back, uh, Christmas. Uh, I'm nervous. My finger's trembling. Don't waste any time, Algy. The engineer's sleeping in the cabin. He'll wake if we don't get away. You don't get away, not from Vladimir. No one treats Vladimir like this. Careful, Whiskers. English, why are you coming and open the door? I kill you for that. Keep back. Yeah. Look out, Algy. You fool. Uh, you don't shoot quick enough, oh. English worm. Now oh. the gun is for Vladimir. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ginge. He twisted the gun out of my hand. He's as strong as an ox. I know. He beat me up once. After I killed this worm, maybe I beat you up again. Now I show you Vladimir shoot quicker than you. Oh, no fear, you don't get... Uh, 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 and another to finish you off. Uh, uh, good work, Ginge. He's out cold. Oh, I've been... I've been dying to do that. When he swung on you, he gave me the chance. There's a gun in his pocket. Grab it while I get mine. We might need both of them. Roger. Now I... Vladimir, what happens? The wait, I come. It's the engineer. Sorry about that. <laughs> That'll keep him low for a while. Did you kill him? Winged him, I think. They've heard us in the camp, I think. No time to win. Across the hills, I suppose. No, we'd have to run in front of the soldiers. Wouldn't have a hope. Then behind the truck. We'll hold out there for a while. Come some lead in their direction. This won't get us away, Archie. We'll run out of ammunition before long, and then what? I'll tell you when it happens. No, you don't. 
see any more of them sneaking up, let them have it. There's only a couple of shots left. I have it any myself. I see. There's a kite coming. That's the helicopter. The what? The helicopter. One of the Australians, Bill Jamison, threw me up in it. He'll get us out. He'll never put down in front of that gang. He'll come close to it. Look at him. Good grief. He's going to drop on the truck. He'll hover about it. Stand by, Ginge. There's a rope ladder hanging from the kite. Grab it and swarm up as soon as you can reach it. I see it. Algie, won't those blokes shoot him down with their rifles? Leave Bill to worry about that. There's the ladder, Ginge. Grab it. Right. Up. They're pelting at him with everything. Shoot back. Come on now. Give them the wave that we're right. Okay. We're going up and away from that fire. Up you go, two Ginge. Into the kite. You're free, old son. We've made it. The window's rather high, Pet. Could you reach it if you stood on my shoulders? Yes, easily. What do you want me to do when I'm up there, Pickles? We can hear voices, so there's obviously someone in there with the Commandant. See who it is, and if they're discussing anything that concerns us, listen in. Roger. Oh, up you go. Oh. All right. Yes. It's von Starlein, Pickles. Von Starlein and the Commandant. I thought it might be. Find out what they're talking about. You say there was an attempt at escape recently, and yet the guards are not doubled. You are a fool! What? No! Don't answer me back. I have seen enough of your inefficiency to take matters into my own hands. I did not agree with that stupid court decision to send Ross and Hebblethwaite here. And now that I have seen Bigglesworth in the vicinity, I know that it was a mistake. You will at once send a signal to Korea, ordering Hebblethwaite to be shot. Then we shall go across to the compound and attend to Ross. When we are there, you will see that the guard is doubled. I am disgusted with what I have found here, Commandant. You have been guilty of gross inefficiency. Because let me down quickly. Inefficiency, I say, I right. must deny it. Ah. What is it then? Let's move away so they won't hear us. They're sending a signal to Korea for Ginger to be killed. That won't get away. I've already cut telephone wires to the bungalow. When they've done that, I suppose when they find they're not getting through, they're going over to the compound to kill Ross and increase the guard. Then we'll act first. Pat, how well did Wang mend the barbed wire when he was working in the compound yesterday? Not very well at all. He only made it look as if it was mended. Good. I'll use the same spot to get in. But it's in full view of the sentry box. Before I tackle the wire, the sentry will be removed. Now, here's the drill, Pat. I'm going straight over to look after the sentry. You contact Wang and tell him to wait for Gimlet and the others. If they come before I'm back, they are to blow up the radio station. If not, we'll forget it and go back together. Clear? Roger. I'll join you as soon as I've given the message. All right. You'll find me opening up the wire. Hop to it, Pat. Now we've started, we mustn't waste a second. <laughs> I told Wang because he's waiting by the track. Good. The wire's open. Your gun handy, Pat? My word. Be ready to use it, but only if essential. We must carry out this stunt with absolute quiet. I understand. You don't want to wake the other soldiers. I don't want to wake anyone but the blokes we are rescuing. What about this Sergeant Malone, because He sleeps in the same hut as the men. In a cubicle at the far end, isn't it? So Ian Ross said. When we're inside, you go to the door of the cubicle. Be ready to hold up Malone if he stirs. Right. Now, lead the way to the hut. He stopped playing around with that light. Close on midnight. Inspector! It's Inspector Bigglesworth! This is the rescue, lads. This is what I was telling you about. Cut out that noise. Quiet at once, all of you. I'm here primarily to rescue Ian Ross. But if anyone else likes to come and face the consequences of desertion when he reaches his own country, he's welcome. Oh, yes. But for oh, goodness yes. sake, be quiet. Or you'll wake the entire camp. Now, as quickly as you can, put on your boots. 
Your other clothes don't matter. Say, what's going on in there? Who put on that light? Here's Maloney. Stand by, Pat. Might as well let Malone come out. We'll take him with us as a prisoner. Put out the light and cut the talk. I said put out that light. Okay. Don't say you didn't ask for this. If you guys like the taste of my whip... Put up your hands. What the... A dime. Say, what is this? Bring him up this end, Pat. The rest of you, get a move on. And remember, no noise. Nice work, sister. Show us your gun a minute, will you? No, keep away. Give it to me. <laughs> Thanks. Keep quiet, all of you. What the dickens do you think you're doing, mister? That was real smart, Joe. <laughs> I like the way you got that gun from her. Now let him have it. Not them alone. There's a certain guy prodded me into this frame-up. Me and my buddy, Johnny Briggs. Remember Johnny? Now this guy croaked him when he tried to escape. I prayed nights on end to get the guy to croak Johnny. And now I'm gonna. That guy, you Malone. No, 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 Joe. Don't be a fool, Joe. Oh, no, no, no. Thanks, sister. Here's your gun. Now we can get going. Can we? Now you've very successfully given the alarm. Those shots must have been heard by the soldiers. Will Biggles have the men through the wire in time? What has happened to Gimlet King and his commandos? This thrilling story reaches its climax in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Adventures of Biggles. Biggles doesn't know that Algy has rescued Ginger from North Korea. At the moment, he is concentrating on his first objective, the rescue of the deserters who have been tricked into the International Brigade. He and Pat quietly enter the sleeping hut of the men and turn on the light. This awakens Sergeant Malone, who furiously rushes in from his cubicle to face the muzzle of Pat's revolver. But Joe Clutson steps in, snatches a gun from Pat, and empties it into the body of Sergeant Malone. Biggles furiously strides into the hut. You crazy fool! Those shots have given me alarm. You've probably sunk us all. I sunk the rat who killed my buddy. That's all I care about. You could have done it later, Joe. I had a gun. First time I've had a gun in my hands since I've been in this outfit. I just dreamed of that. There's no time to argue about it now. Everyone got their boots on? Yeah. Then we'll get cracking. You're under my orders and I want complete obedience from now on. That understood? Sure. Pat, you can lead the way. You, Joe, you're so handy with a gun, you can go with her in case you need help. Yeah, okay. Straight to the kite, Biggles? Yes, as fast as you can. Lead across to the spot where Wang Ling is waiting, then follow the track as far as it goes. What about you? I'll take up the rear with Ian Ross. But don't wait for us at any time. It's your job to get these men to the flying boat. I'll get them there. Come along, Joe. All of you file out after Miss Kendall and Joe. And remember, I want no more noise and no disobedience. No mishaps yet, Ian. If the soldiers are coming, they're taking their time. Aye, Inspector. Most of the guards sleep in a hut at the back of the camp. There's only the sentry hut this side. <laughs> he won't worry us. He's trussed up like a mummy. Yes, they're all clear. 
We can bring up the rear now. Mind if I get Malone's gun? It'll probably be under his pillow. Good idea. The more guns, the better. But if it's not there, don't waste time looking for it. I won't waste any time. I'm going to switch off the light, Ian. It's been on too long. Right, Inspector. I know my way in the dark. Yeah, I've got the gun. Shh. Stand here by the door. What's the matter? Someone coming. Don't move. I tell you, I saw the light go off. Are you blind as well as a fool, Commandant? You are letting your fears take control of you. Those shots were Malone teaching. He listened to one of the fools. He switched on the light and you'll see. The hut is empty. Mm-hmm. In that body... The hut isn't quite empty, gentlemen. What the Who are How you? How do you do, von Stalheim? So pleasant to meet you again. I wouldn't do anything silly. Both of us have you covered. Where are the men and... Uh, who is that body? It's your pal Malone, Commandant. Would you like to join him? And it'd give me great pleasure to oblige you. You won't shoot unless you have to. What do you think you're doing, Bigglesworth? Rescuing the poor fools you tricked into the International Brigade. I'll dread them our soldiers are coming down. You won't get away with these. Ah, I am getting away with it, Commandant. Both of you will keep in well inside the hut. I won't forget this, Bigglesworth. This time, when you are captured, I'll get rid of you. When I'm captured? I'm sure you'll enjoy that moment, Eric. Ian? Yes, Inspector. I noticed that the key is on the inside of the door. Move it outside. Yes, sir. You have a gun, Von Starling. Well, aren't you yours, it? Because he's a wise man. Aren't you, Eric? The key's right, sir. I will remember this. I hope you do. It'll give you something to talk about on long winter evenings. Good night, gentlemen. Out you go, Ian, quickly. Duck! Holy, that was close. The next one may be closer. Run for your life! Why are these men still here, Wang? I told Pat to take them on at once. Miss Pat wished to wait, Inspector. Here I am, Biggles. I wanted to make sure you were safe before moving any further. I told you not to worry about me, Pat. Do you realize the soldiers are already running in circles around the camp? Soon they'll guess which way we've gone and come after us. I'm sorry, Biggles, Pat. We heard some shots It was I... one Salheins trying to shoot his way out of the hut. Now get these men moving at once. And don't stop till you reach the coast. Roger. We can't go on. There's someone coming up the track. The soldiers? No, they come from the other direction, the coast. All is well, Inspector. It is Captain King and his soldiers. You didn't tell me this place was thickly populated, Biggles. We thought the Chinese army was waiting here until Copper heard your voice. These are men from the International Brigade. Get them moving, Pat, and travel fast. Come along, everyone. We'll travel as before. Joe Clutton in front with me and the rest of you in a close fire behind. Okay, okay. we're right with you. And keep down that talk. Okay. Well, you're too late, Gimlet. We've churned up the hornet's nest now. We'll have to go back too. What? You mean we dragged in all this explosive and now we aren't going to use it? Sorry. We'll have to forget about blowing up the radio station. It's too dangerous now. Huh. Oh, it is. Dangerous, he says. <laughs> well, you can be because... You promised us some danger. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you'll break their hearts if you send them back now. How far is the station from here, Wang? A quarter of English mile, not more. I could lead you to it in five minutes. And another ten to do the job. A quarter of an hour. That's all we need, Biggles. With soldiers running everywhere. Well, they aren't likely to be near the broadcasting station, Inspector. That hasn't been used since Jin's damaged the equipment. All right. Lead the way, Wang. The detonators are connected. Right. You satisfied with the charges, Cub? Yes, sir. The way they lay, they blade the rodeo station sky high. Every other building round it. There's a petrol dump not far from there. All the better for the fireworks. Standing by the plunger, Copper. I'll do whatever you want, Gimli. Then let her go. How much further is it, Inspector? Not very far. Don't slacken your pace. We shall be in sight of the sea within two miles now. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not in very good condition for this. Uh, I've had to take a few floggings lately, you know. Sorry, Ian, but we have to push on. I'm still expecting those soldiers to turn up at any minute. It's strange we haven't seen them before this. 
from what you told me, I expect that we'd have to fight our way back to the coast. I thought that myself. It's not like von Stahlhein to let us go without a fight. I wonder if they're cutting through the hills so that they can't get ahead of us without being seen. You know, that's what I do. That is unlikely, Captain King. Country is treacherous with swamps. We have followed the only safe path. Then where the blazes are they? I don't know, but I'm sure there's something cooking. We'll be on the lookout for trouble until we are safely aboard the kite. Better go, Bertie. We're all aboard now. What else, Trout? Oh, fancy seeing you again. Cut out the nonsense and get this kite moving. I don't feel that we're safe. Roger, Elbean. Out into the valley, you go on with us. Ah, well, that's better. Ah, <laughs> by Jove, old boy. Well, are you happy now? I certainly feel relieved to be airborne. But it's odd, Bertie. You know, something should have happened by now. Oh, sizzling sausages, LB. By Jove, I mean to say, don't wish it on to us. Dash it all, I mean to say, when you come to look at it, everything's gone positively swimmingly to date. Has it? Well, uh, yes, dash it, I mean to say, uh, you've pulled off this bally rescue without a bally casualty, haven't you? And old Starley's letting us go without even taking a pop at us. Yes, that's what's worrying me. That and Ginger. Oh, I wouldn't worry about old Ging. Algy, look after him. I know Algy went up to find him, but how did he get on? Have you had any word? No, not a squeak. But as soon as we're below the Korean border, we'll ask old Pat to contact Poussin. They might have heard something by now. Uh, I hope so. Oh, come on, don't look so badly worried, old Bean. And forget old Starley. We've left the blight of miles behind now. I'll bet you he's way back there at... Sizzling sausages. What's the matter? Cast your peepers to the north. There's a bevy of kites coming. I think they're jets. This is von Stahlheim's answer. Those are Russian MIGs. Von Stahlein didn't bother attacking Beagle's party on land. Instead, he sent the deadly Russian jet fighters to intercept the flying boat. Can Beagle's beat off such an attack? What can save the flyers now? Don't miss the conclusion of this thrilling story in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Beagle's. of Biggles. Algie has rescued Ginger from North Korea. And now Biggles and Gimlet King have successfully raided Kratzen and brought away the men who had been tricked into the International Brigade. Strangely, there had been little attempt to halt the flight of the men to the coast. Dawn is breaking as Bertie lifts the big scorpion into the grey sky. But even then, Biggles feels unsafe. His fears are justified when away to the north a number of tiny specks can be seen above the horizon. They're jets, aren't they? Russian MIGs. This is von Stahlheim hitting back. Dive, Bertie. Dive? Yes, they'll be on us in a second. But there's only water below us, old bean. Put her down, you ass. Hurry, those are jets. Roger, Dodger. Pull her out when you're a few feet above the drink. If I can. 
Miss Valley Pantechnicon's liable to snap in two when you pull her out of a dial. Well, that's up to you. But she'll certainly snap if those jets get their teeth into her. Oh, hear that? Yes, that onto us. He's her out now, Bertie. Gently does it. We're awfully low, old bean. Can't maintain much speed down here. Our speed doesn't exist compared to those jets. Keep as close as you would plan to the water. The only weakness of those jets is against the low flying kite. With their speed, if they dived on us, they'd go straight for the yeah, the bladders are still potting at us, notwithstanding. Of course they are. And a lucky shot might connect. Anything we can do, Biggles. Yes, there is, Gimlet. There's a pack of jet fighters onto us. MIGs. I saw them. Have we any hope? A little, providing we stay close to the water. But if there's one suicide pilot amongst them, he'll finish us. That's where you can help. Anything you say. Get your blokes to man the guns. Particularly the turret gun amidships. Keep pelting up lead so that if any boat flies into the screen, he must collect some of it. Okay? Sure. We'll hop into it at once. Oh, and Gimlet, tell Pat to get the radio going. I doubt if it'll help, but she might warn them down south of what's happening. I think she's doing it already, but I'll check on it, Boyle. Boys down south can't help us much, old bean. Don't forget they aren't allowed to do from above the Manchurian border. What's that to our left? Hmm? The coast. And by Jingo, that's the mouth of a river, isn't it? The Yalu River, on the border of Manchuria and Korea. Whether we get out of this or not, we are leading those MIGs down into the war zone. Baked potatoes, yes. Well, our sausages can hit back. There go, Gimlet's boys. Biggles, Biggles, I've been in touch with Algy. Algy? He and Ginger are on their way up. What are you talking about, Pat? Up where? Here. They're leading a flight of Australian planes and they're coming up to help us. Bertie? What planes do the Aussies fly? Hang if I know, old bean. Algy said they were flying Gloucester Meteors. British jets. Oh, I say, good show. Now we'll see the fur fly off those belly MIGs. <laughs> You should have seen them go. After we clocked two of them, the rest just turned and went for their lives. <laughs> we chased them right up to the Manchurian border. Did you have any casualties? Well, they didn't stay in the scrap long enough to give us any. They only fought until we drew blood. And I'd like you to know, Inspector, that your blokes handled those meteors as if they'd been flying them for years. In fact, they're almost too good to be in 77 Squadron. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rare compliment, Jamison. But you weren't in the scrap too, were you? My word, he was. He organized it. Well, how did that come about? I leave you here in Pusan as a liaison officer, and you finish up near the Yalu River in a jet dogfight. Well, you can blame Algy, sir. He started it all by going after Ginger. Bill took Algy up in a helicopter. After they'd rescued me, we went back to the base of 77 Squadron. The Aussies, you know. You should go up there, Bertie. They'd give you a few tips on flying. Harriet and I are treating this frivolous discussion with ignore. It's beneath us. But I say, what did happen when you trundled back there? Oh, uh, we contacted Puzan and learned that you'd gone off with Gimlet to help Biggles. Uh, that's when Bill was smitten with a bright idea. Yeah, that's when you two coves dropped such broad hints I couldn't ignore them. You see, sir, they uh, thought you might land in trouble. They felt you couldn't possibly carry off the stunt without them. Oh, Harriet, old darling, what drivel these people talk. Well, it occurred to me that our boys could do a flip up near the Yalu River. Nothing to do with you, of course. And that uh, Algy and Ginge might care to fly a couple of the kites. Well, the CO agreed, and there we were. <laughs> well, I can't tell you how grateful we are, Bill. All of us, yeah, eh? Yeah, by Joe. Especially me, Bill. Now, we're now we're do you think you could come down off the operational level for a moment and be a mundane liaison officer again? Well, <laughs> just name what you want, sir. I'd like you to take some work off our hands. We've blown up the transmitter and rescued the blokes from the International Brigade. All that remains now is to get rid of them. Can you help there? Oh, yes, that'll be easy enough. Most of their countries are represented here in Korea, so uh, I'll simply hand them over to their own authorities. Well, that'll be a great help. And it'll allow us to have some rest before heading for home. The last few days have been rather tiring. <laughs> you uh, haven't fallen for Korea yet, so I thought you'd want to stay here. Scarcely, but I'll always be glad I came. Why is that? I'd heard of your Australian 77 Squadron. Now I know them.
That's my report in full. Anything else you want from us? No, thanks, Gimlet. I think this will satisfy Scotland Yard. <laughs> Good. Then I'll be on my way. You know, it's a funny thing. While we were flying back to England, I had half a mind to see if Raymond had a permanent job for me at Scotland Yard. Well, there's nothing we'd like better, old man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's been grand doing a stunt with you again. Yes, I've enjoyed it. But now I'm back, well, all I want to do is to get home again. Mm, wonder how fond of horse flesh a blighter can grow, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's just that I remember a, a flea-bitten old grey called Seagull. It was positively spoilt by the clot who owned her. And what was his name now? Um, Gimlet something or other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll admit that I'm keen to get back to my horses, but any other time you want to help on a stun, Biggles, I'll... I'll be in touch with you before you can jump a fence. Thanks a lot, Gimlet. And thank your blokes for me. They were grand. And Wang Ling said that when we left him at Hong Kong, well, it's been an honour to be associated with you. Bye-bye. Come on. Ah, one of the best, old Gimlet. Yeah, so was young Ian Ross. You know, we became darn good pals during the last few weeks. Have you heard what's going to happen to him, Biggles? I'm going to ring Raymond now. He should have been in touch with Ian's colonel by this. Well, just before you ring, Biggles, did you notice this in the paper about young Tony Harvey? Tony Harvey? In Spitz during the war, wasn't he? Yes, that's the black. He's been killed. What? Didn't he become a planter and go out to Africa? To Kenya. Here, read this. Killed by the Mau Mau terrorists. How horrible. We leave the killing in Korea and walk straight back to it in our English newspapers. <laughs> Wonderful place, this world of ours. Mau Mau. Those are the natives, aren't they? A sort of secret society. They're trying to wipe out the white rule of Africa. The tragedy is they sort of good blokes like Tony Hart. Hello? Are there about it? Hello? Hello? Assistant Commissioner Raymond? Oh, uh, Biggles here, sir. Yes, I have the reports ready. They'll be down to you in the morning. Yes. But look here, sir. My gang is very worried about young Ian Ross. Hmm. Is he being treated all right now that he's back with the regiment? Oh. Oh, really, sir? I say, that's grand. Excuse me while I pass it on. I say... Next time you see Ian Ginge, you can call him Corporal. He's been promoted. Corporal? Oh, good work. But, you know, I think they should have made him a Sergeant Major while they were about it. Yes, so do I. Hello? Oh, that's all I really wanted to know, sir. I'll discuss the reports with you in the morning. What? Uh, another job? But we've only just come back from Korea. Oh. Oh, well, if it has to be done... Where is it this time? I see. Oh. oh, very well, sir. Yes. Yes, we'll talk it over in the morning. Good night. Tell us the worst, Biggles. Oh, by Jove. Now, look here. If that old blighter Raymond has another job for us, I'll... I'll... You'll I'll... do it. Like the rest of us, you'll hunt down native terrorists in Africa. <laughs> In a troubled world, there is always work for Biggles and his air police. What excitement is waiting for them in dangerous Africa? Hear more of this thrilling new story in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles.